So a question had come up on an earlier video in this series about creating a clock, and the viewer had created a clock, but it wasn't varying, and the sun was always rising at the same time, and the sunset was always happening at the same time. So I thought I'd take the time to create a new video that shows how to create a clock for the day-night cycle, and in the process, we're also gonna fix a small error that's cropped up in the code. Now, to do that, we have to go back into our code, and let's take a look back at our variables and refresh our memory here of what our variables are doing. So in our update time function here, we have this time of day variable. And that would seem like that would be the thing we would use for our clock. However, the time of day is controlling the rotation of the sun. As you can see down here in our adjust sun rotation, right? The sun angle is calculated directly from the time of day. And then we are rotating our sun based on that. And so what that means is that the sun is going to come up whenever the time of day is equal to 0.25, and the sun is going to set whenever the time of day is equal to 0.75. Then what we did is we added in this time curve that allowed us to effectively dilate time, if you will, to change how quickly the time is passing. And what that allowed us to do is have the time during the night pass more quickly, time during the day pass more slowly. Um, and that's time from the user's perspective, not this time of day variable. So what we need to do with our clock is not show this time of day variable, but rather we need to show kind of the time experience of the player, the elapsed time, if you will, um, of that day. And so that's what we need to create. We need to create a new variable that's gonna be elapsed time, and we're gonna put that in here into our update time, and then we'll reset it each day. So let's go ahead and do that and add that new variable. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna do it right here underneath the um, target day length. It's gonna be a serialized field, private float, um, and we're gonna call this uh, lapse time. And then we're gonna come down to our update time. And here, right underneath when we update the time of day, we're gonna update the elapsed, elapsed time. And in this case, we're just going to update it with the time delta time. And so what that's gonna do is effectively create a timer, and we're just gonna to add to this elapsed time. But when the new day happens, which is down here under this if statement, we wanna reset our elapsed time. And that will give us the amount of actual real time that has occurred since this day has started, and that is what we can use to set our clock. So let's create a new function here. Update clock. And here, what we wanna do is translate this elapsed time into, um, we're gonna start with a 24 hour clock. We're gonna convert that into um, hours and minutes. So we're gonna take a float, um, we're gonna call it time, and we're gonna set this, this is just going to take this elapsed time, which is in seconds, and turn it back into a zero to one variable. So what we're gonna do is take our elapsed time, and we're gonna divide by, target day length times 60. So again, our elapsed time is in seconds, our target day length is in minutes, and so that's why we wanna multiply by 60. And this will give us a value between zero and one. Next, we wanna do hours. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this time and we're gonna multiply it by 24, since there's 24 hours in a day. However, we don't want, that'll give us decimals, and we don't want that. So what we're also gonna do is we're gonna do math F, and we're gonna do floor, floor to int. So that's gonna round down to the nearest integer. Then we're gonna do float minute. And this is a similar idea. Um, we're gonna do time, time times 24, so that's, uh, again, that's our hour. And then we're gonna subtract the hour that we calculated above. And what that's gonna leave us with is the decimal portion of the hour. And again, we don't want a decimal, we want this to be in minutes. So we're gonna take that value and multiply it by 60. And once again, uh, we don't want a decimal in minutes, so we wanna round this down once again, floor to int. And that will give us our hours and our minutes. Now before we create a UI uh, element to display this, let's just uh, print this out to the console. So we'll do a debug.log statement, and we'll just say time, space, and then we'll do a hour, 
uh, to string. You don't really need the to string there, but I kind of like it like that. And we'll do a minute. Um, same thing, don't need the to string, but I kind of like it. So we'll put that in there. And last thing we need to do is call this update clock function. So let's come back up here and we're gonna put this, we're gonna put this, um, it doesn't really matter where we do it. We're gonna put um, update clock, we'll put it in here. We'll put it within the, the pause functionality so we don't have to update it uh, when the when it's pause. Shouldn't matter too much. All right, back into Unity and once it's compiled, you can see that we now have our elapsed time here. And let's push play and see if we get a nice time display in our console. So there you can see we've got our hour, we've got our minutes going up. So let's now let's create a UI element to display this. So I'm going to create a UI element. I'm going to create a text, and that's also going to add a canvas for me as well. All right. So there's my canvas. Here's my text. I'm going to size that up a little bit. I'm going to move it up into this corner here. I'm going to lighten up my text a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read. And do best fit. And I'm going to center it. I'm going to rename that element clock. Then we need to get a reference to this element. So back into Visual Studio. Um, right here under elapsed time, I'm going to create another serialized field. Um, private text. So now we've got this reference in here. Um, and let's go down here back to our update clock function. And we will display our time. So we're gonna have hour uh, to string plus a little colon in there and then minute to string. Okay, so basically just change the statement from a debug log to uh, updating this element. Let's go back into Unity. Okay, and we need to now add a reference. We need to drag and drop that text element into the clock text and let's push play and see if it uh, works so there we go we've now got a, a clock that's displaying you can see this there's some issues with it here right whenever the time whenever the minutes is less than uh, 10 you get kind of a weird reshaping resizing of the text which isn't very pleasant um, and also not everybody loves a 24 hour clock I kind of like a 24 hour clock but not everybody does so what we're gonna do next is kind of make it pretty. We're going to make it work a little bit better. We're going to do a, a bunch of things here. First thing we're going to do is string and we're going to have an hour string. And this will make sense. I think this will make sense once uh, you see what I'm doing here. So we're going to have a new string that's hour string and a new string that's a minute string. And then what we're going to do, we're going to say if the hour is less than 10, then we're going to say our hour string equals zero plus hour to string else hour string equals hour to string so basically we're just going to add an extra digit in the front of it and this is why we need the string i can't add a digit in front of the float um, i need to do this with a string and so we're going to do the same thing with the minute so if the minute is less than 10 we're going to say the minute Oop, I spelled it. I spelled it wrong there. We'll fix that in just a minute here. Zero plus minute to string else equals minute uh, to string. All right, let's fix that typo. And then what we want to do down here in our text is not the hour uh, dot two string, we want to do the hour string and the minute to string, or minute string rather. Okay, let's go test this, see if that works. And now you can see we're not jumping back and forth when uh, our minute are single digits and our hour has a nice uh, zero right next to it. it. Looks a little bit better in my opinion. You may not like the zero on the hour, um, 
do as you please. Next thing we're gonna do is add the ability to have this as a 12 hour clock versus a 24 hour clock. So to do that, um, we're gonna add a new option and we're gonna have up here, um, I'm gonna add a new serialized field. It's gonna be a private bool and use 24 uh, clock. Okay, I'm just gonna call it use 24 hour clock and I'm gonna set this true by default. And this could be a nice option for your players to adjust. Some people like 24 hour clock, some don't. Uh, this could be a nice option for you to expose in a settings menu or something. So we're gonna add a few changes here. We're gonna say if we're not using the 24 hour clock and the hour is greater than 12, then we're gonna set our hour, we're gonna subtract 12 from our hour. Basically that's gonna turn our 13 into our one or 14 into a two and so forth. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, refining here with our, uh, our string that we're printing out to our text. Because if we're not gonna use a 24 hour clock and you see eight, is it 8 a.m., 8 p.m.? Um, so let's add in the a.m., p.m. options as well. So what we're gonna say here is, I'll give myself a little bit more space. Um, if we use a 24 hour clock, then this is what we're gonna do, just what we had before. Else if the time is greater than, greater than 0.5. So again, that's referencing here the time variable up here. So if we're more than halfway through the day, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the same line here and we're gonna add a PM to it like that. Else, we're going to add in a AM. So basically, if we have a 24 hour clock, we're just gonna print out the number. If we're not using a 24 hour clock and it's after halfway through the day, we're gonna add a PM. If it's, and the only other option is if we're not using a 24 hour clock and it's the first half of the day, we're gonna add an AM there. So let's go ahead and take a look at and see how it's working. So there's our 24 hour clock. If I toggle it off, uh, we now get an AM. And as we wait and we wait and we wait, we should get a PM here when it clicks over. And there's our PM. And so there you go. It's We got our clock working with our AM and PM. Now what you may notice here is that we're gonna exceed 12 PM. We've actually gone to 13, 14, 15 PM, um, which is a bit of a problem. This problem comes up when you are trying to do very precise time like we are now. Now that we have a clock and we're showing the exact time to the player, it exposes an error that I made earlier. So we can go ahead and fix that, and I'll show you what that is. Uh, it's a pretty easy, uh, pretty easy thing to fix. We're gonna come up here to our update time scale. So right here, we're gonna come up to this one here, and the issue here is in this line here where, we've, where we're evaluating the time curve. So again, this is working reasonably well. It gives us the effect of our day-night cycle. However, it's not time accurate. So what we need to do is when we're evaluating this time curve is not the time of day variable, but is more based on this elapsed time. So what we're gonna do is we're going to replace this with elapsed time, and we're gonna divide by the day or the target day length multiplied by 60. So again, this is kind of the same thing we did in the clock. This variable right here gives us an elapsed time, but it does it with a value between zero and one. If we save that, go back into Unity, let that compile, and we should be able to see here that we get an accurate time and that our time of day goes effectively to 11.59 p.m. and then resets itself. Or in this case, we should get to 23.59 and reset ourselves. And there you go, that's fixed our time issue and we now have an accurate length of time. Now I will say the error or the size of the error that was created there is dependent on your time curve. If your time curve was perfectly constant, then you're not gonna see an error. However, if your time curve is varying, like mine is here, you can see this is my time curve. The bigger variance you have here, the bigger change um, or the bigger size of error that you'll experience. So there you go, we fixed an error that was causing some imprecision in our timekeeping. We've also added a clock that supports both 12 and 24 hour uh, displays. 
In the next video, we'll be looking at how to add a little bit more precision in terms of our length of day. Um, I hope you'll join me for that, and I'll see you next time.